Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got a great video for you today because we're finally getting back to some mini ICX content which is, is after all why I created this channel in the first place but people keep on sending me graphics cards and processors to review. Today we're getting back to mini ITX though and we have a brand new case here from Corsair. It is the 2000D Airflow. Now this isn't the first foray into small form factor and mini ITX from Corsair. We had the Obsidian 250D and the Graphite 380T or CAT transport box uh, as I like to call it. Both those cases pretty interesting. The 250D probably more interesting because it was a little bit smaller and quite unique. But Corsair has been absent from the Mini ITX scene for probably over a decade, I think, since those cases were, were actually created. So today, the 2000D Airflow is here, and we're going to be putting it through its paces, comparing it to, of course, some other tower cases, such as the Meshlicious, the Fantex Shift 2, and the NZXT H1, because I think all three of those cases might be on your radar if you're considering a case like this. I'm pretty sure it's the biggest of the three, but in terms of water cooling support, there are some pretty exciting things inside. So today we'll be carrying out some cooling testing, seeing what we can actually fit inside and doing a system build as well. So let's crack on with the video, not before a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57. And in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the get key button and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you want to move your mouse over to the Start button, right-click, go to Settings, then Update and Security, and then move up to Activation, and finally click on Change Your Product Key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click Next, then click Activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT 25, click Apply, and you will see a hefty discount. Okay, here we have the four cases that we will be focusing on today and all the Mini ICX fans out there are probably already in the know about what each one of these is. We've obviously got the case that we're looking at today, the 2000D Airflow from Corsair. We've then got the Fantex Shift 2, which you can see is the tallest case here. It's a, uh, an inch or so uh, taller than the 2000D. And if we flip over the top, you see that both cases are pretty much the same depth. But down here, we can see that the 2000D is a fair bit wider. Now, moving on, we've got the gorgeous NZXT H1 version 2. And uh, that's pretty small. It's a cube sort of shape uh, profile. And it's, um, it's a lot shorter than the first two cases. But obviously, we can't make too many comparisons with this case in terms of cooling because it comes with its own AIO liquid cooler and um, we can't really replicate that in the Corsair case, and nor would we really want to because we've got a lot more space in the 2000D than we have in the NZXT H1. However, the case that we'll be focusing on today, though, is the Meshlicious, and for some very, very good reasons. These two cases are very, very similar. They've got um, kind of removable panels uh, pretty much all around. You've got excellent water cooling support, which probably isn't something you would say about either of those two cases, although I did manage to fit 320 millimeter radiators in the Fantex Shift 2 with a little bit of modding. It is possible, but it's a pain in the backside. <laughs> I was going to say something else there, but um, the Meshlicious, obviously very, very happy to accommodate water cooling. Not Amazing radiator support. You can probably get two in there at a squeeze in terms of 240 or 280 millimeters. I was looking at putting two 280 millimeter radiators in the Meshlicious um, at some point in a new build. And then we have the 2000D. So the Meshlicious definitely gunning for that uh, small compact look to a tower case. And it's again, it's really surprising just how much they managed to squeeze in here or how much you can squeeze in here. Um, so the Corsair really, really needs to deliver when it comes to 
what you can actually cram inside because it is taller, it is wider, and um, I think it is as deep or deeper than the mesh lisha. So definitely a lot of things it needs to be getting right in terms of what you can actually house inside and a whole bunch of other things as well. So it's going to be an interesting mashup between all these cases today. Okay, so here we are with the 2000D then, and this is the cheaper model which doesn't come equipped with the fans in the front of the case, and those fans are actually RGB enabled, and they're slim as well, which is an interesting addition, but there are reasons for Corsair including slim fans in the front of the case that we'll get to in a minute. So the exterior, pretty clean, it's, um, it's pretty tall as well as we've seen with uh, other cases, and we'll uh, get some other cases side by side with the 2000D in a minute, so you can get a better idea about how it fits in amongst the likes of the NZX-TH1, Fantax Shift 2, and uh, Meshlicious as well. And um, you've got vented panels, all with this uh, very, very similar design, kind of going all the way around, except for the rear panel, which has a removable dust filter and a vent underneath like so and that is a bit of an issue which we will get to later on in the video but mainly it comes from the fact that the graphics card points against this panel here and this is pretty restrictive as you can see in terms of airflow now again i'll stick with the rear of the case for the moment and we can see that we've got this fairly unattractive black power cable running down here which is um it's just a bit of a lazy design, really. Now, there are lots of other cases that do this. Uh, the um, Fantex Shift 2 does it as well, but Fantex has a much more elegant design where it runs the cable down inside the case, and then you have an actual power port for your kettle lead to just plug into at the bottom of the case, which is much more elegant. Not only is this cable black, but it runs down the exterior of the case, and with this white model that we've got here, I mean, that's just... Um, a bit of an abomination, isn't it? I am, I'm really not too keen on that, and I'm pretty sure given how a lot of you out there were pretty horrified at the fact that ASUS was including external sound cards with cables um, with their Mini-ITX motherboards recently, I'm pretty sure you're not going to like this either. It's also a bit fiddly to deal with. You know, you have to individually tie each of these Velcro things. A couple of them pulled out when I was trying to route the cable, um, which is just a bit annoying. And if I go up to the top of the case you'll see the uh, the panel pops off really easily which is no problem but if you don't tie this cable down properly here it's absolutely essential that you use these two uh, these two velcro straps to secure the um, kettle lead because if you don't the um, because the top panel doesn't secure very tightly it's just using loose magnets um, you'll actually get um, the top panel not sitting properly and the cable kind of pushing it up which isn't ideal either so Bit of a lazy design from Corsair there, especially given the size of this case, it would have been very easy for them to route the cable internally and to have an external power port. Anyway, let's get some of these panels removed and we can start checking things out. Uh, not before we talk about the front panel though, which is down here and on the front of the case. So I like the, uh, it's kind of still a minim minimalist design. If you have the, ca the case on your desk, it's gonna be very easily are very easy to uh, to access these buttons, which is not the case on the Meshlicious or the uh, NZX-TH1, for example. Their ports are on top of the case, which isn't ideal. At least here, you can actually have your um, headphone or laptop or whatever you want uh, charging from the Type-C port or those or your phone or something. So it's just a bit easier to uh, to access. You get power and reset buttons as well, and that's uh, full USB 3.2 Gen 2 down there as well as two USB 3 ports. So that's the front panel dealt with. We're now going to try and remove the actual front panel. So all of these panels, the both sides and the roof are protected by a mesh on the inside. So you're going to be um, pretty well catered for in terms of dust protection, although they're the actual dust filter itself in there is kind of embedded and you can't really easily remove it. So if you're going to be de uh, dealing with dust with a vacuum cleaner, you're going to have to clean the whole panel, which is not too, not too bad because at least the top and the front panels, as you can see, came off pretty easily. The side panels do come off relatively easily. They're a little stiffer. They're also held on by thumb screws, but it's pretty, pretty easy to deal with without screws. Um, but 
I'm not too keen on the fact that they also use these uh, these flanges to kind of secure onto the case. It just means that when you kind of reinstall it, you have to line that up and then you're also having to worry about popping it in and then it has a habit of falling off again. So it's just a bit of a fiddle. But once you get used to it, it's okay. It, you just might find the first couple of times you use the panel, it's a little bit fiddly. So I'm gonna pull that off again. And uh, we'll also get shot of the rear panel. And again, it's just like, when you flip it around, you just forget which side pops and which side has the little flanges to the sliders. So again, I don't know why Corsair just didn't go with a full pop um, pop in design with this case, it would have been much easier for the end users. So as we can see here, lots of rivets all over the place. So unlike the Meshlicious, it doesn't really feature a screw together construction. There are a couple of bits that do screw in like the power supply tray, um, which I'm told does support SFX LP issues as well, but it's um, it's, it seems pretty narrow in there. So we'll have to uh, double check that compatibility later on. But the the main uh, thing here is that with the Meshlicious, because it's such a compact case, having a screw together construction meant that you could just dismantle it and install your hardware while you're building the case. And that allowed me to fit some pretty big graphics cards in there that I otherwise wouldn't be able to. So I think the RTX 4070 found, or 4070 Ti Founders Edition can actually fit lengthways in the case like that in the Meshlicious, but you couldn't fit it in if you couldn't remove the case, if you couldn't dismantle the case. Dismantling the case also just makes installing your hardware much easier. Obviously with this case, you've got the added benefit of having something that's much larger. This is much taller and slightly, just a bigger volume than the Meshlicious. Um, Radiator support we'll get onto in a second in a bit more detail because there's some interesting findings there But the main radiator mount is this one here which supports either 360 millimeter radiators or 280 millimeter radiators and uh, obviously fan mounts in the front of the case and also at the rear as well um, They're not I think most of them are documented. There are fan mounts there, but obviously that's where your graphics cards I'm going to sit down there. Graphics card mounting, absolutely brilliant in this case. You get triple slot support, as you can see down there. And uh, any more than triple slot won't be possible, as we'll see in a minute. The um, the Palette Game Rock cards don't fit in here because they're slightly deeper than three slot. But pretty much unlimited length um, restrictions there as well. So if I flip the case over and we can have a look on the underside, we've got a vent down here. And this is primarily just to allow you to access your motherboard's I.O. panel down here and also to access the graphics card um, ports down here. And also the fact that it is vented, as we can see here, is gonna allow things to breathe, especially your graphics card, because that sits right there. So if it's expelling hot air, it will at least, at least be able to ex ex um, find its way out of the case um, to some extent. Um, it is a not a massive vent there, but it is, a, it is gonna allow some heat to, to be expelled down the bottom. Now, something I was concerned with was the lack of an angled video output, such as uh, display, uh, display port or HDMI cable like you get with the Meshlicious. The Meshlicious has a similar design to this with the graphics card facing down and you get an angled uh, video cable to cater for the fact that the graphics card is, is so close to the base. You don't get that with the 2000D, but thanks to these fairly large case feet, the height above the desk means that you can actually route a cable a standard display port or HDMI cable just out the base of the case here. It does bend round enough to do that. So hopefully, unless you've got some crazy um, heavy duty cable, you should be able to angle it as such yourself. So what else have we got to talk about in here? Probably so the storage. So you've got a couple of uh, two and a half inch SSD mounts. I believe there's three in total, but sadly, despite the volume of this thing, there are no three and a half inch mounts for hard disks. And that's that's a little bit disappointing uh, from my point of view. I mean, there's definitely the possibility of mounting something down here in the base of the case um, if you were desperate. Um, but it's just a shame that Corsair didn't think about that because smaller cases such as the Fantex Shift 2, I believe, and definitely the Meshlicious at least give you the option of doing that. So that's... Um, Pretty much it from the interior of the case. I think I've already mentioned that the uh, power supply cage, which supports SFX and SFX LP issues, does allow f uh, for it to be removed, which may 
be easier if you're wanting to route your cables um, and that kind of thing. Speaking of cable routing, there isn't really much going on here, but there, I mean, there's plenty of space to route your cables, just that not that many places to hide them. So with a vertical arrangement, the cables are tending to go up the, um, the corners and that kind of thing. And there are plenty of cable tie anchor points as there as there as well, but there's not really much in terms of Velcro or cable routing channels or anything like that, which we might expect from a uh, a larger or more premium Corsair case. So that's pretty much it from the uh, quick walk around and we'll now talk about radiator compatibility. So we are gonna be checking out radiator compatibility now and Corsair specifies that you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator in this mount and I've got no reason to dispute that. You can also fit a 280 millimeter radiator in here. So that's like a double 140 millimeter radiator. However, what it doesn't talk about are the sort of clearances and the, the fact that you can install other radiators in this case as well, which, you're, which we're going to look into now. So to start with then, the clearance for the main radiator mount stands at around 88 millimeters. So that means that you can fit a 60 millimeter radiator and single row of fans in this case. However, you won't be able to fit a uh, 45 millimeter radiator and two rows of fans, I don't think, because that adds up to um, over 90 millimeters. So that's just too much. But you know, 30, 45 or 60 millimeter radiators with a single row of fans will be absolutely fine with clearance there. And obviously you'll be gaining a little bit. If you remove the SSD mount like so, then you gain a few millimeters and you will now be looking at a clearance of um, around, sorry, a bit tilted there. Actually, no, that's a bit better. I can go up to this mount uh, here. There's just a small flange that you've got to deal with. And here you've actually got 91 millimeters of clearance. So slightly more clearance if you remove the two and a half inch tray here. So that's obviously one option that you've got for your radiators. And if I just remove the, uh, the main fan mount in the side, and uh, I will show you some other ways that you can fit radiators into this case. Now, number one, again, we're looking at a slim radiator here. And the reason for that is because we have to deal with the memory clearance. So as you can see, the um, slim 120 millimeter radiator sitting perfectly well in the side of the case here, but you will be limited to using a slim fan, as you can see there, but you could probably quite easily fit a, um, let me just see if that slots up to the top. Yeah, with maybe with a little bit of modding, you could fit um, a 240 millimeter slim radiator in the side. The problem is you've got the length to deal with as well, and there's not quite enough room to have the uh, the tube, uh, the fittings um, or the barb, the threaded ends of the radiator or in here. So the front of the case is only really designed for fans, so there's not enough room for a radiator, but you can just about squeeze in a 240 millimeter slim radiator in the front with slim fans as well. Slim fans are what Corsair uses in the fan equipped version of this case with the RGB lighting. And there's good reason for that because there are plenty of obstructions here with the memory. Uh, your motherboard's uh, I.O. panel will also mean that you cannot fit a four height fan between the fan mount and the motherboard I.O. tray and that doesn't really have any bearing on what uh, heat sinks or anything you've got. It's literally just the I.O. panel down there. So that's, uh, that's definitely something that you're going to be aware of. So definitely a 240 or 120 or 240 millimeter slim radiator with slim fans in this side and not really impacting too much on anything else. In fact, you could have the radiator here as well as the one in the side mount here and something else I found is that there are fan mounts in the, uh, the rear of the case as well and you can also fit radiators down here as you can see we've got a slim radiator fitting in there now you're not going to be able to fit that in with the graphics card there um, or an air-cooled one but if you have a single slot graphics card for example maybe a water-cooled one you're also going to be able to install a, um, a single row of slim fans on there as well. So there's actually options for three radiator mounting points in this case, and all of them at the same time as well. Probably the reason that Corsair doesn't 
Well, I mentioned too much about this is because it doesn't make slim radiators. You'll have to go with XSPC or Alpha Core for those. Um, but if you are looking to go all out with um, custom liquid cooling, then there's the potential for a very, very well cooled case here and in a very, very small space. So again, I think Corsairs, may, I wouldn't say Corsairs underselling it, but if you actually dig a bit deeper into the dimensions and the limits here, you'll find that there's a very, very capable case for custom liquid cooling. So I decided to go the extra mile for you guys today and uh, I like to back up my claims of more than one radiator being able to fit inside this case and what we have here is a 240 millimeter slim radiator with slim vans on the side. We have a 30 millimeter sort of standard height radiator with standard height fans on in the side mount and down here we actually have another slim 240 millimeter radiator with another row of slim fans here that is three radiators all with fans all in the Corsair 2000D and that's absolutely insane and not only that we've actually got a uh, an RTX 4090 founders edition in here with a water block and there is daylight between the fans and the water block not sure if you can see that but there is daylight i'm not lying there is clearance i think you can see that just down there there is there is daylight between the two i'll probably need like a little brace or something because the water block is being pushed by loads of tubing and everything else but also got an ek flt reservoir up the top here so it's all it's all in here and if i just whip off the side panel with the fans we can hopefully get a look inside and the only way to do it, I think uh, rigid tubing, probably possible, but the problem is you need, you need to remove this radiator to actually get a look inside, and that's going to pose an issue with rigid tubing. So I think flexible tubing is probably the only way to go. Now, there is a bit of kinking on some of these tubings, uh, some of these tubes. So I'm going to maybe jig around with the actual routing, maybe get some anti-kink springs in here, maybe try some different, different tubing. But it's all in there, guys. It is all in there. So we've got the Asus ROG Strix X670 EI gaming Wi-Fi down there. And we have a, an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D. That's the 3D vCache model. In the motherboard, we've got the RTX 4090 down here. And here you can see the uh, radiator. I've just put the fans in loose for now because I've actually run out of um, screws for the slim fans because um, I wasn't expecting to use so many today and I've already got um, a bunch tied up in another build at the moment but yeah it all fits in so all you need to do is like kind of close it up is just kind of route the tubing around so it doesn't kink there's plenty of space in there we've got the reservoir up there as well tilting the case and just laying it on this side will allow you to fill it up so that is absolutely amazing so it just goes to show that you know just a little bit of extra thought here with Corsair and they could have quite easily stated three possible radiator mounting points on the, uh, in this case and it really um, you know this is zero modding as well i've not done any modding to this case this all fits out of the box i mean not all the radiators have all their mounting screws but that's not normally an issue as long as you've got as long as you've got you know at least four securing a radiator then you're pretty much okay even two really as long as the fans are secure so that that is it and you can see here i've got a full height four height fans and a 30 millimeter thick radiator so that is absolutely crazy so if you want to see how this build progresses don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel because i'll probably be taking another look at it seeing what the temperatures are like maybe in a future video of this case or maybe in a uh, an in the lab my regular um sort of look at what, what's going on in the lab here at crazy tech lab i will be taking a look at the temperatures and performance and seeing how this performs and maybe do maybe do like a, a filling video or something to see how this thing looks once it's all full i mean basically you can't really see anything because it's just all radiator <laughs> but i mean if you're trying to fit a um an rt or if you're trying to cool an rtx 4090 and a high-end cpu using just like a 280 millimeter radiator well here you go eat your heart out i've got absolute. i mean this is enough to cool this is more this is more uh, radiator capacity than most most people have in their atx case and i've managed to fit it all in the Corsair 2000D. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty impressed with this case. It has to be said as far as custom liquid cooling goes, but we've got to look at the cooling performance in terms of airflow and also in terms of uh, the conclusion based on price and everything at the end. So let's crack on.
So here is something else that I'm not sure uh, what Corsair is thinking, but the CPU cooler height limit on this case is specified as 90 millimeters, but I've got a Corsair Arctic Freezer 13 in here, which is, I think, either 130, 140 millimeters tall, and it fits with plenty of room to spare. So even if I put the radiator mount back on, um, sure, you're not, probably not going to be able to install fans in the case at the same time or something not over here, but it fits. So I'm not sure what Corsair has in term, is thinking in terms of CPU cooler height limit, but I can't see any reason why you would have anything less than that because it's not interfering with the power supply. Um, it's not interfering with the graphics card mount and it's not interfering with the with the front fan mount um, in fact you can still install plenty of fans here so not sure what's going on there because it looks like you can maybe even get up to about 150 centimeters of, uh, of CPU cooler height clearance here so maybe it's just a bit of a boo-boo on the part of Corsair or maybe it was just assuming you're going to be using um, all in one liquid coolers in this case but the CPU, cooler, the CPU cooler height limit, I have no idea why they're saying it's 90 millimeters. Okay, so we have some interesting results to talk about here then. So the first two sets of graphs, GPU temperature and CPU temperature, are just taken in a game, specifically Metro Exodus on a loops run lasting around 10 or 15 minutes. So easily enough to load both those uh, cooling systems to see what result a lengthy gaming session would have. So starting with the GPU temperature, and we have the first result of 78 degrees C with the front fan as an exhaust, which is opposite to how Corsair has it, and the side fan as an intake, which is obviously benefiting the CPU here. Now, one issue, or the first issue that I found with this case is that the GPU dust filter combined with the vent that's already there provides a very restricted airflow to the GPU, which is basically plastered right up against the um, that panel, or essentially kind of the rear panel as you look at the case. And this is pretty unfortunate because that removing the dust filter dropped the GPU temperature by four degrees C. Now, if this was any other case in any other situation with just a standard mesh side panel, um, you're gonna see much, much better GPU cooling. And as we saw, here with the Meshlicious, with the fan up against a, a large mesh panel with no dust filter in there at all. The GPU temperature is exactly the same GPU in exactly the same situation with the same hardware, just a different case. Uh, we, we've got exactly the same fans as well, and we have a, well, it's eight degrees C cooler than um, having the fans, one fan as a um, intake and the other one as an exhaust. So that's not a great result for the 2000D here. And we even saw a, an even worse result for the GPU with the front fan as an intake. And as I mentioned earlier, that's going to then be working against the flow through fan on the RTX graphics card. So it's very situation specific, very hardware specific, but overall GPU cooling is not amazing on the 2000D for the simple reason that if you have ex uh, intake fans in the front of the case, they're gonna be working against any flow through fans if you're using a modern NVIDIA graphics card. And uh, you're also gonna be seeing in general higher temperatures, even if you don't have an RTX graphics card with a flow through fan, just because of that very restrictive dust filter. So moving on to the GPU temperature, and here we're obviously mainly concerned with that side intake fan. Now, we are using a low-profile cooler. That's probably not going to be something that everybody will want to use in this case, but 
seeing as the CPU height limit is um, less than 100 millimeters, I think, you're not really left with that many options when it comes to using larger air coolers. So you're gonna have a big gap between the kind of air cooling that you can fit inside this case and an all-in-one liquid cooler. So an all-in-one liquid cooler, you're probably not gonna be looking at much different results of the Meshlicious because the front vent of the uh, Corsair case is pretty good. So if you're using the same liquid cooler, you're kind of testing the liquid cooler and not the cooling ability of the case in most situations. So that's why I haven't included those results here. But if you are going to be using some sort of large low profile cooler, then you'll probably want to take a look at these results because they're quite telling. So side intake fan, um, that's obviously leading to a result of 53 degrees C. But swapping that around to an exhaust and having the front as an intake... Um, that's obviously, you're going to be adding a couple of degrees to your graphics card most likely, but it's catastrophic for your CPU cooler. So if you're using a low profile cooler, you absolutely want to have a fan in the side of the case acting as an intake because you'll see a much, much better result there. So with both fans as intakes, interestingly, um, that resulted in a lower CPU temperature. In fact, it was the lowest that we saw and it was also lower than the mesh licious. So that's kind of an interesting result there. I'm guessing it's just benefiting the CPU having um, more positive air pressure and more airflow into the case than it does the CPU, uh, the GPU, which um, again, it's it's kind of horses for courses here. There's, there's different ways of setting this thing up with different fans and I'm obviously only using two fans here, but uh, my preferred route would definitely be to have a side intake fan um, and to have the front probably as an exhaust. So the final test we've got is just loading the CPU. So the last two graphs, as I mentioned, were in a game for 10 to 15 minutes, and now we're moving on to the CPU temperature. So here, pretty telling, you're gonna see similar results if you have the front fan as an exhaust and the side as an intake. Both of them intakes, um, or if you swap all the hardware over to the Meshlicious, there's not that much of a difference between them, at least as far as low profile air coolers that cool top down go. The only situation you want to avoid is having the side fan as, uh, as an exhaust because you're going to be working against that CPU fan. So definitely you want the, the fan as an exhaust and you definitely want a fan in that side panel acting as an intake as well so you want to avoid the exhaust and definitely try and get a fan into that side panel to improve cooling for your low profile so what do we make of the corsair 2000d then well i think if i had to break it down into a few points of things that i love and that i hate about this case starting with the negatives then and first up is definitely the dust filter for the graphics card on the rear of the case here now, it's almost like it was an afterthought, and this highly dense mesh here is just going to kill your GPU thermals. In fact, simply removing this saw the GPU thermals with our RTX 4070 drop by 4 degrees in our testing. If you've got a hotter running graphics card, you're probably going to see it drop by a larger amount. So, all Corsair really needed to do was to offer up a similar mesh that we've got here and work out some way of dealing with the power cable. But then that kind of brings me on to my second point, which is that power cable. I think it's just a very lazy design to have that trailing out the rear of the case like it does, rather than having a more integrated solution like we have with the Fantex Shift, where the cable is run through the interior of the case and you have a rear power port that you can plug your kettle lead into. It's just a bit of a lazy design and also having a black a black cable trailing over the white model that we've got here is just not very aesthetically pleasing. The other thing I don't like about the case is that you are not going to be able to install a three and a half inch hard disk in here and that's not necessarily a problem in a lot of mini ICX cases but with something with this volume yeah sure it has a small footprint but the overall volume given its height and its depth is fairly large on the in the small form factor side of things so the fact that you can't fit a single hard disk in here is a bit disappointing and i know that there are a lot of other people out there that will agree with me now even smaller cases such as the mishlicious will allow you to fit hard disk in if you jiggle around the interior use smaller mini itx size graphics cards and that kind of thing so it would have just been nice to have seen the option or the flexibility from corsair here in terms of installing a hard disk Finally then, there's the slight issue of cooler height compatibility 
Corsair says that it's around 90 millimeters, but I quite easily installed an Arctic Freezer 13, which is around 140 millimeters. So I'm not sure what's going on there with these specifications, but obviously if you don't wanna go with any kind of form of liquid cooling, but you want to house a uh, an air cooler in here, then obviously you do have much better options than some of the low profile coolers out there. So a bit of an oversight from there for, from Corsair, or at least the option of discussing that a bit more in the in their specifications. So in terms of uh, things that I do love about this case, it's got a fantastically small footprint. It's not crazy small, but given um, its volume and the hardware that you can fit inside, such as multiple radiators, even a 360 millimeter radiator, the footprint is pretty impressive. I also like the fact that you can fit a triple slot graphics card in here. Now, the there is a limit there, so you can't fit graphics cards such as the Palette Game Rock because they're bigger than three slots, but Free slot and pretty um, pretty much unlimited length as well is something that is really um, is really great to see in a Mini ITX case. You also have extensive radiator support as well. Again, with 360 millimeter radiator radiator support and the option to install two radiators in this case too. So, in addition to that, you've got the great. Um, sort of space inside to work with even if you can't actually dismantle the case because it's all riveted together so you don't get that sort of added flexibility when it comes to building the PC as you do with the Meshlicious which features a mostly screwed together construction. So overall then it's not a case without its flaws which means the price is maybe a questionable one or at least you should be adding it to your shortlist rather than me giving you an unequivocal recommendation here today. If you like Corsair's cases, then you'll find a lot that's familiar here. And I like the design as well. It's I wouldn't say it's unique. It, Corsair is a bit late to the party in getting um, a tower case out the door, but obviously it's had its own um, Corsair 1 series of pre-builds, which um, having seen them in person, they are pretty impressive. So again, not an un unequivocal recommend recommendation here, but it's an impressive mini ITX case, reasonably well-priced. Um, and if you want to go all out with either a custom liquid cooling or all-in-one liquid coolers with a triple 120 uh, millimeter fan radiator, 360 millimeter radiator, then there aren't many other Mini ITX cases out there that can do that. So I'd like to thank Corsair for sending over this sample today, and I'd like to make a small request to anyone watching this video. Do like and comment on this video. I love hearing what your thoughts are on this case and other Mini ITX cases out there. Are you considering this case for your own build? And also, what did you think about this video as well? Just please leave a comment below, just helps get me noticed. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications as well. Even if it's just for a month or something and you just wanna check out my channel for a bit, everything just helps me get noticed and is a real help to a budding YouTuber. So. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.